Hello my warriors, welcome to the Dynamite series and you are watching VN Light channel with me Shreyas, your physics master teacher at Vedantu, the only dedicated English medium channel in our country for J and NEET. And in this Dynamite series, we have amazing explosive questions just like a Dynamite, which will blow your mind with the concepts, with the formulas and all the ways in which we solve the question. So like you would have seen on the thumbnail or in the title, today's question is all about ray optics. So let's get started with this and before we begin do not forget to smash the like and also hit the subscribe button. So today's question is a lens and a mirror combination like it's shown and you have a parallel beam of light which is incident on this lens and then the final image is formed at I1. So what could be happening is that these rays after the lens refract then reflect from the mirror and then finally, when they are coming back again, they will again refract at the lens. So there are three events. Refraction, reflection and refraction till the final image I1 is formed. You can see their initial separation is 11 centimeters. Now the mirror over here is moved away by 9 centimeters from the lens. So this distance which was 11, you are increasing it by 9 to make it 20 centimeters. The final image now is at I2. So it's at a different location. What's that distance between I1 and I2? Beautiful question. Let's cut it into parts and let's get rid of unnecessary data. I'm going to divide the problem into two parts. First for I1, next for I2. Observe this carefully. First of all, let's see whether we know all the focal lengths. Yes, I do know the focal length of the lens. The focal length of the mirror will be radius of curvature by two. So 12 by two is six. So I should put six centimeters, but take care of the sign. It's a concave mirror. That side is positive. This side is negative. The focal point will be here. So it should be minus six. I hope this is good. Everything is standard pretty much till now. Now, just imagine the parallel beam of light. So imagine this is the parallel beam of light. All right, going like this. And what happens next? Because it's a parallel beam. So a parallel beam of light which goes through a convex lens, what will it do? It will obviously meet at its focus. It will meet at its focus. So the focal point is somewhere here. This is what happens after refraction. And this distance, of course, is just five centimeters. All right. Now, after it meets over here, that's a real image. And the image of the lens is the object for the mirror. That's what you should do whenever multiple reflections or refractions are happening. If there is an image formed by something, that image becomes the object for the next thing. And that guy's image becomes the object for the next thing. So image converts to object, again produces image, becomes an object. So now this is an object for the mirror. And how far it is, we can figure this out very easily. Just see how much this distance should be. This is 11, this is 5, 11 minus 5, that's obviously 6 centimeters. Now does the 6 centimeters ring a bell in your head? Come on, look at the screen, you will be able to see, this is 6, this is 6. Ah, that means this is also the focal point for the mirror right over there. So these rays will, as if, start originating from the focal point. They continue their journey from the focus of the mirror and we know that if you are at the focus for a concave for a concave mirror what happens next is the rays become parallel so these rays passing through the focus obviously they will become parallel something maybe like this so they are coming back now oh now i know what to do the rays which are coming back parallelly they are incident on the convex lens again. So if you have a parallel beam of light, which is again incident on a convex lens, after the refraction, it will definitely again meet back at the focus. So it will meet at the focus. So after refraction, it will meet on this side though. So let's say it meets right over here after the refraction. And obviously this length is five centimeters. And this point is I1 according to the question. The image is formed at a point I1 after all these events 
there cannot be any further reflection or refraction occurring. The first event was refraction, parallel beam meets at the focus. The rays continue from the focus, they become parallel after reflection. And because it's a parallel beam, again it meets at I1. Interesting, isn't it? And that's just the half, the part of the question. Now observe the second half. So I will draw a fresh diagram, but this time the distance will be obviously different because you are moving it by 9 centimeters further away from the lens. So this will be 11 centimeters plus 9, which is going to make it 20 centimeters. So now that's the total separation. We know this is the focal length of the lens and the focal length of the mirror like before is still going to be minus 6 centimeters. Let's again redraw the ray diagram and trust me, it's nothing more than that. Let's see what's happening now. Again, we have a parallel beam of light. So we have a parallel beam of light which is incident on a convex, on a convex lens. Obviously, they will meet at the focus. So again, we have a parallel beam of light after the refraction. There is nothing which will change. This will still remain as 5 centimeters. Cool? Fair enough? All right. Now let's see what happens next. This whole thing is 20. Remember, you have separated, increased it by 9 centimeters. Total separation is 20. So what's the remaining separation now? So let's try to check this out. So this was 20. This is 5. 20 minus 5, that's 15 centimeters. This is where the object will be for the concave mirror. This is where the object is. I don't know where the image is. And 15 centimeters does not ring any bell because it does not match with any of the stuff. It's not even half or twice of any of the things. So I think we have no other choice but to use a mirror formula. So let's use the mirror formula and see what exactly happens, which is 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. V, I do not know where the image is formed. I will complete the ray diagram only after writing this formula, not before that. I don't know what's going to happen. Object distance, be careful. This is the mirror. The rays are going like this. That side is positive. This side is negative. This is the object. So it's minus 15. It's on the negative side. So this is minus 15 is equal to 1 by the focal length. Now think about it. The focal length is already given. I have also calculated it from the previous slide. This is minus 6. So therefore, 1 by V will be equal to 1 by 15 minus 1 by 6. You can take the LCM. The LCM of this is nothing but 60. So 15 goes with 64 times and this goes 10 times. So that's going to be minus 6 divided by 60, which is just minus 1 by 10. Therefore, V will be equal to minus 10 centimeters. Interesting. Negative means it's still being formed on this side and the image is going to be a real image. So this is going to be a real image on this side. So let's try to approximately draw the diagram. So I think it should be like this. It should be like this. And after reflection, it meets maybe somewhere over here. This is that point. So the rays continue their journey. They reflect and they meet right over here. And this distance we have found out to be 10 centimeters. This one, this one is 10 centimeters. That's it till now. Now the last step of the problem, observe. This whole thing was 20. Whole thing from here to here was 20. Out of that 10 went off. So from here till here, think about it from here till here, 20 minus 10, it's just going to be 10 centimeters. Isn't that right? Everybody with me on this? 20, 10, remaining 10. Now this point where the image of the mirror is formed will be the object for the lens. Remember image from one is the object for the next thing. So the rays will continue. The rays will continue. It will be something like this. All right, the rays will continue. But where will they meet? Okay, let's think about it. So the object at, what's this distance? It's minus 10 centimeters after the convex, convex lens, where will the image be formed? Oh, this is five centimeters, the focal length. 
10 is twice of f. So basically, this is at 2f. And if you place an object at 2f for a convex lens, the image is also formed at 2f. Now, the symmetry, and I'm pretty sure you would have learned that in your ray diagrams for all the different kinds of lenses. Obviously, the rays will meet over here, and this will be at 2f. So 2f is nothing but twice of 5, which is nothing but 10 centimeters. Hence, this point is nothing but I2. That's what I got. Done. I2 is done. I1 is done. So let's try to compare them now. Some of you already have mentally calculated the answers. I1 was 5 centimeters from the lens. I2 is 10 centimeters from the lens. Naturally, that distance I1, I2, think about it. This is 10. I2 is 10 from the lens. And from the previous diagram, I1 was 5 from the lens. Obviously, I1, I2 must be 10 minus 5, which is just 5 centimeters. Hence, the correct answer for this question is nothing but 5 centimeters. What a brilliant question. So what we did in this question was we went step by step for every event that occurred. Identifying those events are very important in any optical problem where there are multiple reflections and refractions. The second thing to remember is the image for one is the object for the next. Third thing, ray diagrams play a very important role in solving the questions to give you an understanding of the question. Sign convention cannot be ignored. You need to measure the distances appropriately from the respective centers. And we divided the question into two parts. If we try to do all these things in one diagram, I'm pretty sure it will look like a scrambled egg. So definitely we have avoided that. And finally comparing the answers, we have got the final distance of between the images is five centimeters. So brilliant question and more such amazing questions you will get in our J and NEET crash courses. And even I'm teaching the physics part in these crash courses, guys. And all the amazing master teachers that you see on YouTube and all the favorite ones, probably you don't even see on YouTube as well, who are very experienced in producing amazing results. And after every class, you get the PDF notes, you get the recordings, also the assignments, the doubt solving during the class, full syllabus and part syllabus test series for both J as well as NEET. And these classes are a must for your final preparation of JE and NEET exam. You can check out the link in the description box below, which will provide you the direct access to join the crash course. I'll be waiting to see you in the crash courses. Hopefully you will join and you will obviously enhance your skills. I hope you loved today's video. If you have loved it, go ahead, smash the like button. And if you enjoyed it and you want to see more such things, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. And do not forget to share it with your friends. Your word of mouth is very important to all of us. Thank you very much. This was Captain Shreya signing off. Hasta la vista.